Hello, this is Jeff Risen, the uh, lead editor here at Detroit Lions Draft, and uh, I am at the Shrine Game. Uh, unfortunately, the practices today have been watered out, uh, although I'll give you a quick look outside my hotel room here. Uh, it is not all that bad right at the moment, and there were some scouts here that were more than a little upset that uh, that the uh, didn't get to see the quarterbacks and the defensive backs work out in practice uh, outside uh, in the weather. Uh, there, there are some outdoor teams, after all, in the NFL, and they wanted to see how the guys did. Uh, instead of talking about the Shrine game, guys, right now, I want to talk about Ken Wisenhunt uh, not being the coach of the Detroit Lions. Uh, this caught a lot of people by surprise, myself included. Um, uh, in fact, many of us were led to believe uh, that it was a foregone conclusion, uh, including some of the Lions staff that was down here. They were, uh, they were more than a little surprised. There's, there's not many people here. It's just uh, regional scouts, by and large. Um, and former coach, uh, former defensive back coach Marcus Robertson is coaching the East defensive backs, and uh, I got to say hello to him, but I didn't really get to talk to him about it. But anyways, Wiz was the presumptive guy, uh, and he chose the Tennessee Titans over the Detroit Lions. Uh, it's it's an interesting choice, um, and it wasn't all on Wiz. Uh, there were some things on the Detroit end, from what I've gathered. Uh, primarily was the fact that, that Wiz wanted to, to go with more of a hybrid 3-4, three, 4-3 four, four, three defense, uh, and Martin Mayhew and the guys uh, still around in the personnel office, they believe they have the personnel to run a 4-3 that can win right away. And uh, I do tend to agree with that, but I would have liked to have seen you know, maybe some more creativity with it. Uh, but it sounds like they were fairly adamant uh, that, that this is going to be a 4-3 team uh, going forward. And uh, take that for what it is, but uh, Wisenhunt's a 3-4 guy. He did have a 4-3 for a little bit uh, with his first... Uh, first couple of years in Arizona, but uh, they switched it over. Um, hard to, it, It's a little bit hard to swallow the fact that he chose working with Jake Locker over Matt Stafford, uh, That, and that, that's a very interesting blow. Um, now, maybe, maybe he's he's not a huge Stafford fan and, and wants the idea of the Titans getting a new quarterback uh, with their draft pick uh, and, and somebody that he can really groom and work with. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, but they're, they're similar teams are in similar states. They were both 7-9 and nine last year, both uh, probably underachieved quite a bit from where they were, uh, and a lot of the underachievement came uh, as a result of, of poor quarterback play. Now, obviously, Jake Locker was hurt for, for Tennessee, but uh, uh, Stafford was, he, was here all year. Uh, Tennessee does have a, a, a wide variety of, of offensive weapons for their quarterbacks. It's probably a little bit exciting. Uh, and they have a pretty good offensive line, too, uh, that, that's going to get better. Um, one of the things that they might do is, is also draft an, an offensive tackle with their first pick. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. They pick 11th. The Lions pick 10th. So uh, in terms of draft strategy, probably doesn't affect too much on what the Lions are going to do. Uh, but looking forward to who we're going to hire now. Uh, good question. Uh, I think we're going to see Jim Caldwell be the, the preeminent candidate from, from everything that I've gathered. Uh, and his, his interview did go well. Uh, he had a very detailed plan for what, what to do with Matthew Stafford, which is, which is critically important, uh, and I'm glad that he had that, and it seemed like Stafford was receptive to it by all accounts. Uh, the other main candidate right now is the guy who uh, was not his replacing. That's Mike Munchak. Uh, the only thing that I really have to say about that is this is a guy who interviewed for the Lions head coaching job a day after he interviewed for being the offensive line coach in Houston. Not the offensive coordinator, not the head coach, the offensive line coach. Uh, that kind of speaks to where his, his view is around the league, that he's, he's getting interviews for position coach jobs and the Lions consider him a head coach candidate. That's not a positive in my opinion. Uh, shouldn't be in your opinion either. Uh, hope for Caldwell, hope for the best. Um, there might still be a surprise candidate. I heard a couple of whispers about, about someone, uh, I can't reveal it yet, uh, but uh, let's just say it, it's not somebody that is on anybody's radar at all right now. Um, I kind of think it's a little far-fetched, but uh, we'll, we'll see if the Caldwell thing doesn't go down Then in the next uh, 24 hours or so, then I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up and, and tweet it out. Um, but my, my advice for all of you Lions fans right now, don't panic. Uh, Wizen Hunt probably wasn't destined to be the coach. He chose a different team. Uh, let's root against him for that. Uh, he, he had some warts on him. He was, he was a very good candidate, and I would have liked to have seen him work with Stafford. Would have liked to have seen what he could have done with this offensive line because uh, he was bringing in Russ Grimm, who's a, a very good offensive line coach, uh, and, and to, to work with, with Waddle and, and Warford and the big guys up front. I, I would have really liked to have seen that too. 
But uh, we'll move on. We'll see what it goes. And uh, back to the Shrine game for a little bit. Rough day. Uh, we're, we're inside. The walkthrough didn't do too much to, uh, to excite pretty much anybody. We stayed for about half an hour, and then a lot of us bailed. Uh, I didn't see any lion staff there at all. It uh, doesn't mean they weren't there. It just means I didn't see them, and it was a pretty enclosed area. Uh, a couple things uh, from yesterday about the heights and weights that, that have come out. I tweeted out a link to it from uh, uh, a friend of mine that uh, got him yesterday, uh, Eric Alco at Optimum Scouting, uh, who's a guy that you should be following as well for his reports here. Um, all the guys who were above about maybe 5'10", were really complaining that they got shorted about a half an inch on their, their heights, and, and I believe it. Uh, I'm 6'5", I'm not a small guy, I'm, I'm very good at judging heights uh, from, from my volleyball career, uh, and, and a lot of these guys are, are definitely taller in person than their, their listings. Um, Pierre Desir is an example, the, the cornerback from Lindenwood, listed at just a hair over six foot. Uh, he is at least as tall as my wife, and she is a legit 6'1 and a half, if not 6'2". Uh, and he's right there with her. Uh, stood up, stood right next to him, and, and talked to him for a little bit. So, so it, when you're seeing these heights and weights, please add on half an inch for these guys, uh, and you'll get a more accurate rep representation. Um, although the uh, the the big tackle from Bellhaven, uh, who's listed at six ten, uh, came in at six eight and a half, and and that seems about right for him. So, uh, not all the guys have beefs, but. Uh, the, the, the biggest one it, that I that I noted as being sort of accurate is Sean Parker, the safety from uh, from Washington, who uh, is a guy that I like, who plays a lot like Louis Delmas. Uh, reminds me a lot of Louis Delmas, in fact, on, on film. Uh, came in at 5'9", uh, and unfortunately that, that looked pretty darn accurate from what I saw. So uh, that that just keep that in mind as, you, as you're looking at these guys to add on a little height. Um, I'm going to try to get some interviews with some guys today, talk a little bit. Uh, I'm not a big player interview guy. Uh, one of the holes in my scouting game is that I tend to be too swayed if a guy is an idiot. Uh, and it's unfortunately cost me in the past, so uh, I try to avoid uh, talking to the players in depth other than just getting to know them and, and saying hi and, and, and that sort of stuff. So uh, I'll try to get some, some looks at who's looking at who, who's talking to who, that sort of thing. But uh, beyond that, it's probably not going to be the most productive day. So uh, Hope you all out there are having a good time uh, following along with my, my virtual reports here, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.